Welcome to Cross Point Church. We're thrilled that you decided to join us for church this morning. And whether you're joining us online or in person, uh, we hope that after today's uh, service, you are encouraged and equipped for the week ahead. If you've never been here before, you need to know that we exist to help people find and follow Jesus. And if you want to know more about Cross Point Church, we would love to connect with you. Head to our website, onto our Connect page, fill out the online form, and we'll be able to get in contact with you. Another great way to connect with us is on social media. We're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Just search Cross Point Church MA. Right now, we're in a series that's leading us up to Easter. And in this series, we're looking at the life of Jesus and the many actions that he did to rescue us from sin, death, and the grave. Again, we hope you're encouraged by the worship and the message that you hear today. Let's begin. buried beneath my shame who could carry that kind of weight it was my tomb till I met you You call my name and I 
When it does happen, it's usually at Christmas or at a birthday. In fact, it almost always happens at Christmas and at birthday time. Sometimes there's other days, but most of the time it's just at Christmas and birthdays. It's a family tradition that's been passed down over the years. It's something that I say to the kids or to Leslie. And as soon as I say it, I immediately have their attention. In a semi-sassy tone, I simply say, I know some secrets. I know some secrets. And like I said, as soon as I start singing those words, they turn to me. Their eyes open up. What? What? What is it? You can't say that. You can't say that without saying the secret. And we just have some fun. And my teasing turns into torture because I'm just silent with them. I don't say any more. I just let them be frustrated for a while. It's a fun time. But the reason why it's a tradition and the reason why they are so excited is because they are never disappointed when they discover what the secret is. Never disappointed. I have something special for you. There's something that I want you to know. There's a secret for you. And when I'm done today, I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Today, we begin a message series that's going to take us right up to Easter. Uh, Easter, Easter Sunday or Resurrection Sunday is the day where the resurrection of Jesus is celebrated. It's remembered. It's the end of the story of Jesus while he was here. There's a significance to all of that. This powerful story of Jesus, even if you've heard it before, there's always something new to learn. There's always something interesting to hear. Something that has the the capacity to profoundly impact your life. The story of Jesus is quite possibly the longest running rescue mission in human history. God sent Jesus to rescue you and me from the consequences of our sin. Jesus dying on the cross was the price of that rescue mission. Jesus' love for you and me was the motive of that rescue mission. And we needed this rescue mission because, frankly, our foolishness, our mistakes, our junk, there's just too much of it to be counted or measured. Our sins are many. Anger and hatred, greed, jealousy, lying, gossip, murder, theft, selfishness, pride, violence, and so much more. It just goes on and on. And our best efforts to not do those things, our best efforts to try and not think that way, our best efforts to try and not talk that way, our best efforts to try and not act that way, almost guarantee the fact that we're going to think, speak, and act that way. It's a never-ending downward spiral. And the consequences that come because of our sin, are so great that only God can help us. Without God, we have no hope. Without God, there is no rescue. Proverbs chapter 20 has a powerful verse that really sums up the entire circumstance. Who can say, I have cleansed my heart? Who can say, I am free from sin? The rhetorical answer is no one. No one can say that. The Apostle John, who was one of Jesus' closest followers while Jesus was here, described and recorded this rescue mission that Jesus was on. It's better known as the Gospel of John, the good news about Jesus that John wrote. And what John wrote was absolutely fascinating. It describes Jesus. It records his mission in ways that no one ever had before. The coming of Jesus was the beginning of the story. 
And John records that in the very first chapter of his gospel. Listen as to what he writes. John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him, all things were made. Without Him, nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. If you've ever heard that chapter before the beginning of John, you know that there is an enormous amount packed in there, so much information. It can and has been simply summarized as the coming of Jesus. And you can separate the coming of Jesus into two rather simple parts. The first is that Jesus was coming from heaven. Coming from heaven. The beginning of this matters. How this all started is really important. The origin of all things really does matter. John said, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Jesus was with God in heaven. He left heaven to come here. Remember, the mission was to make it possible for you and I to restore our relationship with God. A relationship that was broken because of our sin. And Jesus' part in that mission was to take away our sin, remove the guilt of our sin. That was what Jesus' part was. John, the Apostle John, quotes another man named John, John the Baptist. When John the Baptist saw Jesus for the first time, this is what he said. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John, in one sentence, summarized the entire mission of Jesus. Now, our part in restoring the relationship with God is to accept, to receive that sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. Now, I know I told you there's a lot in this small section of the Bible, but when, Jesus, when John said that Jesus was the Lamb of God, he was describing how that mission was going to be fulfilled, what Jesus was going to do in order to take away my sin, take away your sin. That's Jesus' part of the rescue mission. Have you ever had anything break? You know, like a car, an appliance, or even a computer? The problem when any of those kinds of things breaks is that there are so many parts, it's not so easy to determine what actually is no longer allowing the car or the appliance or the computer to work the way it was before. One of the ways you can sometimes figure that out is by uh, uh, using what is uh, understood as a known good. You're, You're not sure which parts are working, but you've got some known good parts over here. So let's say for a car, it's an alternator. For uh, an appliance, it is a switch. For a computer, it's a board, sound or video, whatever. Over there, you've got a good uh, uh, alternator. You've got a good switch or a good board over there. You take the good board and you replace what you think is a bad board, a bad switch, a bad alternator. And when you do that, and it be, and the the car or the appliance or the computer begins to work again, you know what was wrong. You know what was broken. Jesus, in any way, in any short, in in, in any time, 
is a known good. Always. When Jesus shows up in my life, he takes my bad heart and replaces it with his good heart. He takes my bad mind, my sinful mind, and he replaces it with his good mind. Jesus is a known good. The problem sometimes that we have with this is Jesus just doesn't stop with our heart or our mind. It's everything. And we struggle with that. God, I don't, I don't need everything. I just need you to do this. It's, it's only, God, it's only when I think about that. God, it's only when I see that. God, it's only when I get frustrated over this. I just need you to take care of those small things. I don't need everything taken care of. It's not as if I need to be completely rescued, God. I just need your assistance. God, I don't need you to save all of me. I just need you to save some of me. Doesn't that even sound silly when I say it? Of course it does. John said that the word became flesh. The word became human. This isn't supposed to be possible. The, the spirit world is not supposed to be able to coexist with the physical world. But because Jesus is like no one else, Jesus can do what no one else can. That was the whole point. That was the reason why God sent him. The big word for this is incarnation. That which is purely spiritual was perfectly and flawlessly combined with that which is purely human. And neither suffer, neither are stained, neither are made less. And if you're not into the whole spiritual, philosophical, metaphysical argument that sometimes this can bring up, let's just go to the simple and practical aspect of the difficulty of trying to be a spiritual person in a physical world. Trying to live a life of faith in a world that is faithless. Yeah, you and I all know that there are huge challenges in all of that. Some people say that living in the world like that, living for God in a world that really doesn't want God, can't be done. And yet, Jesus coming proved that it could be done. And people say, because it can't be done, it shouldn't be tried. And because it shouldn't be tried, we're just not going to even pay attention to Jesus. He was rejected. That's exactly what John wrote. John said, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. I like the way another version says it. He was in the world, and yet the world didn't even notice. He came to his own people, but they didn't want him. And that's exactly why Jesus came. Jesus came to not only show us what could happen, he came to show us what did happen. It's not supposed to be able to happen, but that's what God did through Jesus. And because he did it through Jesus, God, through Jesus, can now do that for you and for me. Jesus wasn't only coming from heaven. He was coming from heaven for you and for me. He came for you. This isn't a church thing. This isn't some complicated religious thing. This is about a relationship. Listen to what John said. John wrote, Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or even a husband's will, but born of God. Listen. Heaven is not some eternal place for people that have figured out how to do more good things in life than bad things. It's not a place for people who have figured out how to keep their scale always tipped positively. That's not what heaven is about. Heaven is a place for people who began a relationship with God here and continue a relationship with God, a better relationship with God, a perfected relationship with God there. That's what heaven is all about. 
You know, there are a few things in, this, in these last 12 months or more that we've been reminded of because of COVID. We've been reminded that we really matter to each other. We've been reminded that relationships are quite possibly the most important thing for our entire existence. Relationships just aren't the human glue that keep us together. Relationships are the purpose for us to be together. We aren't simply accepting the fact that we weren't allowed to talk to one another, to see one another, to be with one another. We really struggled with that. Do you know that the stock value of Zoom, a, a, a digital company that makes it possible for businesses and schools, people in businesses, schools, families, friends, what have you, to be able to have video conferences, video calls, to see someone, not just talk to them. Do you know that the stock value of Zoom in one year rose a thousand percent from September 2019, or I should better say to the fall, from the fall of 2019 to the fall of 2020, the stock value of Zoom rose a thousand percent. Do you know what that means? That means people will do what Ever they can to stay connected. People will pay any price to be able to sustain a relationship. Jesus paid the price. Jesus paid the ultimate price for you and I to restore our relationship with God. There's so much power in that understanding. John wrote that through Jesus, you and I have the ability to not just re simply restore a relationship, but become a part of the family of God. Family of God. This isn't about coming to church. This is about getting the family back together. This is about keeping the family together. That's how important this was to God. That's how important it was to send Jesus. We don't come to church. We are the church. We don't come to church to get into heaven. Listen, John said, if we receive Jesus, if we believe in His name, we've already begun the journey to heaven. It's not about scales. It's not about good and bad. It's about restoring a relationship. It's about removing the guilt of our sin. It's about restoring the relationship that God wants to have with us. And because He wants to have that relationship with us, He sent Jesus from heaven for you. There are only two reasons why you come to church. You come to church because you already have a relationship with Jesus and you're trying to deepen it, strengthen it, enhance it. Or you're coming to church because you want to establish a relationship and you're trying to figure out how that starts. That's the only two reasons. Either way, Jesus coming is the beginning of it all. Either way, Jesus coming is what makes you and I have the ability to restore our relationship with God. I know some secrets. I know some secrets. There's someone who has come for you. And I guarantee you, you will not be disappointed. I guarantee you, that that burden that you feel when you put your head down at night, the things that you worry about, the regrets that you have, the pain over some foolishness or some mistakes that you've made, the things that you want to forget, the things that you want to let go of, God sent Jesus to remove that. He sent Jesus to forgive you of all. All of that. To make you new. To make you whole. To start all over again. That is the incredible, wonderful, powerful secret of the coming 
of Jesus. And now you know it. If you will receive the gift of Jesus that God sent, if you will believe in His name, if you will follow Him, if you will be baptized into His life, wow, that is what God is waiting to give to you. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending Jesus. Thank you so much for understanding how horrible we feel, how much we regret, how we'd like to have done things differently. But because we can't, because we can't undo what we said, because we can't un undo what we've done, Lord, you came and made it possible to take that guilt away, to forgive us, to restore us, to bless us, to make us one of yours, to keep the family together. God, thank you for Jesus. We pray all this in his name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I love my iPhone because my iPhone is where most of my life and most of my reminders exist. And in fact, I have reminders set up every single day to remind me of the weekly and daily tasks that I need to make sure I do every single day. Uh, because I'm a forgetful person. Sometimes I forget things, and, and it's good to have that little reminder. Every week at Crosspoint, we take some time to remind ourselves of what Jesus has done for us on the cross. We call this time communion. It's a simple practice where we take a piece of bread and a cup of juice, and we remember, we're reminded of what Jesus did for us on the cross, that he gave his body and he sacrificed his blood uh, so that we might live. So if you have uh, juice and crackers in your fridge or in your cabinets, go ahead and grab those now and spend some time being reminded uh, of what Jesus has done, reflecting and remembering and thanking him for his sacrifice. Lately, I've been reading through the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, we see God ask his people uh, to give him an offering, 10% uh, of whatever they took in from the harvest uh, as a reminder and a way to say thank you uh, for the blessings that God had given them. And at Crosspoint, that's what we believe. We believe that offering and tithes and generosity is a way to be reminded and thankful for what God has given us. Every good thing that we have has come from God. So if you want to thank God today, and if you want to be reminded of His goodness in your life, I'd encourage you to consider giving to Cross Point Church to support the mission to help people find and follow Jesus. Several ways you can do that. If you're watching online, you can give online. You can text to give. Uh, and if you're in the building, uh, feel free to give on your way out the doors in the black boxes. Again, we believe that generosity is a way to be reminded and to thank God. Uh, let me pray for you as we conclude. Heavenly Father, uh, we're thankful that even though we may be all over the world, we may be all over the country, we can gather online and worship you. And God, we know that the technology and and all the many blessings that you have given us make this possible. And so, uh, God, I ask that we would be uh, generous, that we would see what you've given us, and that we would want to thank you for that. God, thank you so much for this time of worship. I pray that we've been encouraged and equipped for the week ahead. Uh, you're a good God, and we're uh, so blessed to be able to serve you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Hey, we want to thank you once again for joining us here at Cross Point Church. Uh, we hope that you are ready to go face the week, that you're ready to live for Jesus, and you're ready to help people find and follow Jesus. Again, we'd love to connect with you. Go to our Connect page or follow us on social media. Have a wonderful week.